Hello again guys, I received this really interesting little box in the mail from geekbuying.com. This is apparently the Geek Box, but taking a look at the back we can get a little bit of info about it. As you can see it has an ARM 64-bit octa-core Cortex-A53 processor. If I remember correctly it's a rock chip processor, that's one of the reasons I wasn't initially kind of big on it. But it's got 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, gigabit Ethernet, loads and loads of ports, as well as a micro SD card slot, HDMI, comes running Android 5.1, but wait what's this? It also runs Ubuntu. So this is capable of dual booting between Android 5.1 and Ubuntu. It also mentions Light Biz OS, which I am definitely not familiar with, but it was these first two that kind of caught me off guard. And from what I understand, I think they're actually planning to upgrade this to Marshmallow in the very near future as well. It's open source, it's developer friendly, and like I said, it does also work with Ubuntu. So definitely worth a shot. Takes a five volt at two amp connector, does 4K, supposedly 4K at 60 hertz over HDMI 2.0. So all around this actually sounds like an amazing little package. So let's open this up and see what we got. First up you have the device itself. Who cares about that? We'll put that away. You have an interesting little manual. Talks about the design of the device, the contents and specifications, some of the interface and the main functions. That's actually the board that'll be inside of it. Different connectors and whatnot and how it's expandable. Here's your little remote that comes with it. Looks actually an awful lot like a Roku remote and it looks like that's gonna take two AAA batteries. Here's what appears to be the charging cable. It's just a little barrel connector with a USB plug on the other end. And in a bit of a downer, here's your charging wall wart. USB plug though, so this should not be a problem in the slightest. I will say they did go ahead and include this adapter so I can just plug it in like this but I would much rather use a standard charger that I've got here because as I said, it is just five volts at two amps and I've definitely got chargers that'll do that. And last but certainly not least, HDMI cable. And actually you might be able to see it there on the cable. It does say high speed HDMI cable with ethernet. So hopefully this is HDMI 2.0 compatible. I would assume so. And in a bit of last but certainly not least, for the sake of contrast, I'm gonna do this. You have the box itself. Not a terribly huge little box. Got a couple of antennas on the back of it. We can kind of pop up like this. On the back you can see your power plug, micro USB, TF card slot or micro SD card slot, full-size HDMI, gigabit ethernet, and two USB ports. And just double check the box, those are both USB 2.0 host ports, so they should work with mice and keyboards and maybe even a webcam, but they're not USB 3, so don't go in expecting they will be. And they'll probably also work with USB storage, things like that. There on the bottom it says Geekbox rated five volts at two amp max. On the top, I really, really like that design. That is super cool. This is a very nice modern design. I love it. And that's about all there is to it. So at this point, Absolutely time to take it and hook it up to something. Okay, and as you can see we are powering up the geek box for the first time The lights turned on and went to a sort of a nice purple color and then blue But you're just seeing the uh, Android logo at this point should be loading up Android 5.1.1 or 5.1 can't remember at this point point. and here we go We are ready to start using Android. I've actually got a mouse hooked to it in case we wanted to use a mouse But I do also have the remote. So let's just see if the remote does anything uh, that's a weird one. I have this little got it thing that is in the middle of the screen, wallpapers and widgets, so I have to dismiss that before I can do anything else. Okay, so let's see what the remote does with it now. So when I move around, I can select some of these icons. Let's look in the app drawer. App to IDE, lots of standard apps. I see eHome Media Center, a couple of File Explorer apps, Kodi, Super SU, interesting to see that out of the box, Netflix, a music app, and that's about it. Actually not a huge amount pre-installed. Basically you've got your Google Apps Suite and then a couple of other things. Media Center themed things. Let's go ahead and check our settings about device. It says here Android 5.1.1 on the Geekbox. It does say Geekbox Lollipop as the build number. I'll have to actually come in and set up the Wi-Fi before we can go any farther. Just had to hit the OK button to get it to work. Very nice to see it does support 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I should mention I do have a keyboard and mouse hooked up, so that made it a lot easier. It's nice that it has the two USB ports for that option, at least for the setup. Seems to be having trouble obtaining an IP address. There we go. I did have to try it out on my non 5 gigahertz network, but it is connected at this point, and suddenly my 5G network disappeared. I will worry about that later. So now we can go back within the settings, do an about device and system updates to see if there are any updates. Well, it did not look like there were any updates. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I've got the right date and time zone. That's much better. 
And actually, I noticed up here at the top, it mentions this super SU binary needs to be updated. Let's go ahead and try to do that. Super SU needs to be updated, sure. And I will say, for a device that says it's catered toward developers, very, very nice to see super SU pre-installed. And it says installation success, so it looks like everything worked appropriately. Let's take a quick look at the web browser. Built-in browser is just the standard default browser. And it does take us to the Geekbox website. And actually, that's one of the things I was curious about. I was searching in the background, how do you switch between Android and Ubuntu? And as you can see up here, there are a couple of buttons, one for reboot and one for update. So I can only assume the reboot button is what does the switch. So we may try that in a minute. As far as how it works with other sites, we'll go to my site. Pulls up decently fast. Oh, a new video just went up. And it did take a little bit of time there, but not too bad. Let's take a look at the media browser there. It just mentions video and flash. I wonder if there's any pre-installed stuff, anything to go from. No. We have a music app, music player. Press the menu key to more. That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah, there you go. If you had music on the device, you could play it with this. We've got a gallery. Again, we don't have any content at the moment. File Explorer. Let's go ahead and just check the YouTube app. A newer version is available. Okay. I will see. I keep finding myself coming back to using the keyboard and mouse because it's just convenient. And we can do the update on the Google app. Cannot be updated due to an error. Let's just do an update on everything. Well, other apps appear to be able to update, so maybe it's just a problem with the YouTube app. It is at least in the list here. So we'll let this do its thing, and I'll be back here in just a bit. All right, so just a couple of minutes later, I've gone ahead and got all the apps updated. We are back inside the YouTube app looking at my channel because these are videos that I can actually show. So here's a video I uploaded the other day. Now, interestingly enough, I was not hearing any sound. I'm guessing it's just being redirected and I don't have my setup quite right. Job done. It's great for traveling until you realize because I can see through the audio monitors on my capture device that it is providing audio. So we'll get out of the video. It does look like it is playing appropriately. It doesn't appear to have any real sluggishness. Everything so far has been decently snappy. Let's take a look at Kodi. I'm not familiar with Kodi. I just haven't used it, but if I remember correctly, it's the rebranding of XBMC or the update to it. So yeah, again, if I had any content on here, I could actually use this to play it back. But as you can see, I, I just, I don't have any content on here. And for the sake of time and covering everything, safe to assume this is Android. It can do all of the same kind of things Android can. So whatever media files you'd want to play on it, it is supposedly capable of up to 4K. Now let's go ahead and try to reboot into Ubuntu because I want to see that. Actually, I think I figured it out. Down here in the lower left corner, there's this button. Click on the power button. It pops up and says power off, reboot, or reboot to Linux OS. So if I had to guess, you have to actually come into Android before going into Ubuntu. And that was pretty painless. It does say Wi-Fi networks are available, so it's obviously not going to be sharing any of that information. Go ahead and get that connected. This is LXDE, so this is Lubuntu. Makes sense. It's kind of lightweight, so it should work a little bit better on this system. And here you can see we've got the normal suite of Lubuntu-based apps, as well as Chromium web browser. And because this is Ubuntu, you ought to be able to come in here, and there you go. It's running updates. It says it's running Trusty, which is Ubuntu 14.04, which I guess kind of makes sense. The, the last long-term supported distro that they have here in a couple of months, they'll have a new long-term support. And because this is Ubuntu, I would assume that you could run updates on it. At least I hope you could. And there are a bunch of updates on here. So yeah, we'll go ahead and let it do its thing. So far, as you can kind of see, really not bad. Decently responsive. And when we're ready to go back, there's a reboot to Android right here. But you know, I don't want to spend a massive amount of time on this. So far, this is a really interesting little device. I'm going to go ahead and start using it for media playback and maybe a Linux related things. Maybe see if I can get Ubuntu to update to a newer version on it. So don't consider this a full review. Maybe after I've used it for a little while, I'll come back and do an update to this video. And let me know if there's anything that you'd like to know about it specifically. But thanks so much to GeekBuying for sending this out my way. Thanks to you guys for watching. Remember to hit that thumbs up button below the video if you like this video. Subscribe to receive more when they become available. And we'll see you again next time.